Hey everyone, JB for Just TCG here, and today we are doing more Hex Shards of Fate. Since last time, we have made some additions to the deck. Nothing major, um, apart from adding a few more warriors, putting in Howling Brave, putting in nice, another nice guy Stargazer, and putting in three copies of Hatchery Broodguard. Uh, main, I know he costs six, but with the Howling Brave, I just think with the ramp now, I just think it's fine to put in. On top of this, we've also put in two copies of Cannibalize, so draw two cards and lose two health, and a copy of Stalker of Marbrass. For those of you not familiar with Stalker of Marbrass, three mana, three one. It's quite a high threshold cost, but once per turn, pay three health, add three spike counters to this. Add the start of your turn, remove all spike counters from this. Draw a card for each spike counter removed this way. On top of the equipment I've got as well, Stalker's Blood Boots that I got recently. Uh, whenever it dies, you get one health for each spike counter on it. So if it dies with three spike counters on it before you get to draw the cards, you get three health back. So it's not the end of the world. Um, in terms of talents... They've also got a bit of a rejig. Um, I have taken away the combat trained. I just thought it wasn't great. Um, and instead, I've put I've redone Warlord Agility to so battle costs one less. And I've put Warlord Strength into Buster's plus one damage. So not only does it now do one less, so it does the cost one less, does one more, and I start with two charges. So all around, I think these are all good good I think these are all good changes all round so what we're going to do today is we're going to go back to the cave-in and talk to Farney okay so here he is well did you find Professor Boyd no sign of him but I did find a bunch of tools and this satchel this is Boyd's satchel it's full of sodium nitrate this will be useful in crafting dynamite. Thank you for bringing this to me. What's about Boyd? Oh, who cares about Boyd? He didn't find his corpse, so I'll hold out hope he's still alive. Say, do you know anything about the Warden of the World? The what of the what? Never mind. I think I'm supposed to find some kind of Fey Woman. That's certainly odd. I have heard rumblings about a cloaked surface dweller that's been lurking in the tunnels nearby. Perhaps that's who you're looking for. Complete the quest. There we go, 250 gold, 700 experience, and one Tranquil Dream Pack. Uh, full of... Well, we've got a Dream Spider. Doesn't look too bad. But nothing for us in terms of the equipment. Oh, I lie. There's equipment for Sora. Brilliant. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. So what we're going to do... Is very quickly head over and equip that now. We'll go to filter, filter everything out. Tanko of Terror. There we go. Sora now, instead of just requiring chin hairs to sacrifice, you can now sacrifice anything. So there we go. Uh, let's talk to Mia. Forgive me for the intrusion. We have not met before, and yet I see a strong sense of familiarity in your eyes. Uh, who are you? A traveller, like yourself. My name is Mia. I think I was thought to meet you here. Is that so? Who told you that? I had a dream. Sister Midnight told me to find a Fey of the First Mortals. Fascinating. I had a similar dream, traveller. In my dream, I was walking through a field of stars, stepping on constellations as if they were pebbles on a beach. I saw myself coming to the cave and meeting an ambiguous stranger. A cosmic voice whispered to me that this stranger was going to help me. To be fair, not ambiguous. I'm a bunny rabbit. I'm holding a sword. Help you with what? Forgive me, I am a bit confused. I never imagined you would be the stranger from my dream, Shin Hair. The dream has brought us together for a reason. Sounds, uh, sounds like fate to me. I believe you are right. Why else would I be told to leave the Feral Route to travel to this subterranean hole? What purpose could it be? Well, in the dream, after I met this mysterious stranger, we parted ways. I remember the final words of the stranger were that they were going to find the Army of Myth. If the stranger is you, that must be your purpose. Well, what is the Army of Myth? I thought you would know, since it was you who said it in the dream. Some believe the Army of Myth is just that, a myth, a child's fable. 
Others claim that the army only appears to a few chosen exceptional individuals who are destined to reshape reality itself. Exceptional individual. Oh, we haven't got an ego. Chosen. I wonder who does the choosing. The dream has brought us together, so I strongly believe that we must follow its vision to its conclusion. You must find the army of myth. Where would I find it? According to the legends, the army of myth does not exist in a place. It appears when events of tremendous consequence are poised to occur. If you truly are the one I saw in the dream traveller, the army will find you. Farewell, Mia. Or Maya. 100 experience. Find and defeat the army of myth. So Vincent has suddenly become available. I wonder what he's got for us. Greetings to you, Shinhair. My name is Vincent. Might I, might I request just a moment of your precious time? Hello, Vincent. I am the local representative of the Benevolent Exploratory Order of Cartographers, Chapter 4371. The BEOC is dedicated to the idea that the world can be mapped from every curve of beach to every mountaintop seam. So you're a map maker. Well, yes, that's what a cartographer is. Indeed, I'm proud of it. Maps are essential to the educated life. Not only do they show you where you are in relation to the world around you, they can also be wondrously detailed works of art. The dwarves allow you to operate here. The cartographers are an internationally sanctioned organisation. We are neutral to all geopolitical causes. Our goal is to map the world. We care little for the various ideals and ambitions of those who live upon it. Now, down to business. I wish to hire you for a contract. Uh, I don't... I'm no map maker. A colleague of mine took his help, took his uh, uh, took his team to map the arid wasteland to the northwest of here. Herbert is an experienced expedition leader, so it is of great concern to me that I have received no word from him in weeks. I need an adventurer type to head to the desert and search for any signs of Herbert and his team. I'll take the job. Splendid. Now, in order to get there, you will have to go through the wildwood. This area is dense and can be quite confusing to traverse, even for an experienced traveller. Here, take this map. It will show you a map, uh, show you a path that should get you through the forest. Though it won't help you with the giant mosquitoes, so take precaution. Well, thanks for the warning and thanks for the map. You shall be well compensated if you manage to return to me with news of what happened to Herbert. Or yet, better yet, return with Herbert himself. I'll see what I can do. Indeed, so... Got a couple of quests. We need to find a dust buzzard. We need to go to the Skittering Ridge at some point. We need to find it and defeat the army of myth. And we need to find the lost gnomes in the northern desert. Lots of things to do. Let's go back onto the world map. Okay, so it looks like there's only one place we can go. And that is the Wildwood. Now, if you remember, we went through the Wildwood a bit last time. And got lost a Tangled Jungle Path. Negotiating the dense wildwood is difficult and laborious, but thanks to the map that Vincent gave you, certain landmarks become apparent through the endless tangle. Just before the fall of dusk, the trees begin to thin out and you can actually see a break in the foliage. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so, I want to go this way first because this way seems to go towards a quest. So we'll go here. A dark jungle, the Burkhart. Hopefully we don't get punished like in the piranhas last time. Tangled jungle vines loop over the path and impede your progress. You lift your weapon to hack at the ropey plants. You cease your chopping when you realise that the prickle at the back of your neck is not dripping sweat, but the intense gaze of the enemy hidden in the foliage. You spin and swing, striking an arrow from the air, causing it to ricochet off into the brush. You ready yourself for battle as a hidden enemies attack. Okay, so we won the coin flip. We will choose to go first. Uh, first things first, however. Um, let's have a look at what we're playing against here. Souls Crescendo, basic, four, one ruby threshold, draw a card. Each champion gets at the start of your turn, draw a card. And at the end of your turn, discard your hand. Okay, so we want to look to get rid of our hand before he manages to play Souls Crescendo. And each champion starts with a permanent resource. We will go first. And this hand looks fine. And we'll start with a Monsaki Deadeye. Okay. Cool. 
So it looks like he's a green red ramp deck. Therefore, this must die. We'll then play a wild shard. Cannot play the Bucktooth Commander because we don't have two wild threshold, but we can play the Banner Bunny. Okay. There's a 2 1. Whilst he's attacking, it has Swift Strike. Sure. No. No third threshold. I'm really, really looking for a wild shard. There's another Swift Striker. There's a blood shard, not really what we were after. And we're in a world of hurt now. We get to draw two cards here. Needs to be a wild shard. Okay. We're going to lose uh, Uzumi's handmaiden and the hatchery and the hatchery brood guard. However, I think given the state of our board at the moment, that doesn't really matter. Uh. Yeah, let's just kill this now. We're going to discard our hand. But that's okay. So now everyone draws two cards a turn, but they lose their hand at the end of the turn. So, yeah. This has not worked out well for him. Nice easy win. Four hundred gold, two hundred experience. You smile as you strike the finishing blow to the elven leader. You search his body for loot and find a well-loved wooden flute in a hidden, in a hidden inner pocket. You drop the flute to the ground. Crush the flute under your heel. Turn and leave. Well, no. Turn and leave. Okay, so on to the next thing we have here: the barking forest. A small grove of trees on the Howling Plains. A robot slumps under a tree on the side of the path. You creep behind the figure, wary of an ambush. The robot lies on its side with its back pried open. The parts that gave it the energy to move have been yanked out. There is evidence nearby that the robot was attacked by a small organised group. The robot's rear panel was pried open with spear tips. Three parts have been removed from the control panel without collateral damage to the robot's insides. You circle the robot's fallen form, following several sets of tracks until they diverge. You are able to identify one distinct set of prints, leading north into the Howling Plains. Okay, onwards and upwards. Indigo Plains. What brings you north of the Thunderfield? It's dangerous to tempt the elements without a storm caller. Oh, okay. Stormcaller? A Stormcaller has learned to bend the powers of the sky to their will. Mages with powers more advanced than my own. How do you survive the storms? I ride the lightning, but you walked here. I followed your tracks. You followed tracks. Were you drawn here to me, or did you come of your own free will? Did you choose this path, or were you chosen? Did you kill that robot south of here? We did not kill it. We removed its shackles. We set it free! Oh, it's one of those. Do you have the parts that were taken from the robot? I took this strange blue fragment for myself. The power of Sapphire belongs with a brave who is willing to ride the lightning. Let me see the piece. I'm curious to what sort of device can capture lightning. You cannot think for yourself. Even what you say now sounds planned. 
I will free you from the shackles of your controller like we freed the robot. Really sounds a bit cultish, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so we're up against Little Sky. Let's look at what is on offer. Whenever troop enters play, the next action in your deck grants a charge and ride the wind. Basic one sapphire threshold, four charges. Each champion draws a card and gains charges equal to the drawn card's cost. Basically means we can sort of play it for free. Uh, we have Stalker of Marbrass in our opening hand, but we only have one shard of, of one blood shard. So we'll just have to be a bit careful. Um, I'm not actually a fan of this hand. I think we're going to throw it back. Yeah, I'm going to throw it back. This is not much better, but I'll keep it. Okay, so nothing much on Little Sky's first turn. And now we draw all the shards. Okay. And we'll just end the turn there. What's this? Thunderfield Seer. <laughs> okay. Next action gets draw a card. Sure. Well, not what we're after, but we will play a Munari Sensei. There's Evolve, interesting. And then we will exhaust or tap this to gain a charge. Next action, action is going to draw, gain a lot of charges, and then we will just finish this. And then we'll end, and then next turn we can evolve. Nothing much happening, but the evolve sounds really good. There's Conky Bunny. Uh, which I am just going to straight up play, I think. I think it will be foolish not to. So yeah, game two, play the concubine. Gain a charge. Continue to combat. I don't think I gain a charge off that because um, it was in my opening hand. It wasn't in my opening hand. So it should have gained a couple of charges. Yeah, it did. Gain a charge. Okay. What's this? Three mana, two one, meant to a song, transform this into an oracle song and put it into your hand. What's the oracle song do? Ah, okay. Sure. I have no qualms with killing that. Observe. We will attack with everything except the Conky Bunny. And then plus turn. We are looking really good here. I don't know if Little Sky has any sort of area of effect spells. The Void is the orange swirl. Oh, it's, it's like Exile. 
The Void is the orange swirly whirlpool over by your deck cards that are banished there. Do not return. It is exiled, like in Magic the Gathering. Or banished in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. Mastery of Time. Take an additional turn after this one. Sure. That is not really how you use a card like that, but sure. Yep, draw two cards. Well, thank you for wasting everybody's time there. Uh, there's a blood shard. I forgot to add a bunny hopper. My bad. Uh, we will attack for two, four, five, six. And then post combat, we will ramp up and play the uh, Hatchery Broodguard that we put in our deck at the start of this episode. What's this? Six mana, four, five. Prophecy, deploy. The next troop in your deck gets spell shield. Cute. Okay, there's a Bucktooth Banner Bunny. One shot, five. Can I do this this turn? I think I can, you know. So we will attack with everything. And then we will troops you control gets plus two plus zero. And there we go. Pretty easy right now. Uh, I'm really waiting for a challenge, but there we go. Okay, what did we get? We got 200 experience. We got a chicken twice skin jacket. We've got quite... I think that's a duplicate, actually. I think we've already got that one. Uh, and dino boots. Your mecha T hexes. I don't think we've got any of those, so it doesn't matter. Well done. You've managed to capture the lightning. What will you do with it now that you have it? Bend it to your will or set it free? I'll return to the robot, then decide what to do. Very, very noble. You match the prongs on the sapphire conduit to the re receptacles in the robot's back. Crackling blue energy arcs from the connectors inside. The robot hums to life. Loading, starter, protocol, main processor, all right, hexadecimal, P99, memory testing. I am not reading that large number. Memory information, multi-channel, 16,000 bit. Channel XXX master, none. Channel XXX slave, none. Says IPL3552099. Mobility test, failure. Balance and operations, failure. Directive, none. Dialogue, intended to engage. JPL, really long number. Enter query, are you operational? Unable to load conversation dialogue. Reconnect Ruby mainline. Are you missing Ruby mainline? Unable to load conversation dialogue. Reconnect Ruby mainline. All right, I need to find more parts for you. So, I did spot this at the very bottom here. Three Braves, although it's not letting me go down to see it. But we need to fix the robot and we'll leave that for next time. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe for more. You can also check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Links in the description below. In the meantime, though, I've been JB for Just TCG. This has been the Hex Shards of Fate Shinhair Warrior campaign, and I'll see you in the next one.